Hi friends. I'm in the kitchen tonight and I'm making meatloaf. Now, meatloaf is not something that I make a whole lot of. Um, in fact, when my kids were little, they did not prefer meatloaf. They didn't like it, even though I grew up on it and I loved it as a kid and they just weren't crazy about it. And I don't, they love burgers and things like that, but they just never really liked meatloaf. And so it wasn't until they were probably teenagers, um, I put a twist on it and I kind of turned them into meatloaf sandwiches. It's not really that big of a twist, but so this meal is actually like a two part meal because what I'm going to show you tonight, we're going to make the meatloaf and then we're going to have it with, um, some vegetables and potato and then tomorrow I'm going to make them into sliders on Hawaiian rolls with some crunchy um, onions on top that are fabulous with this um, mayo dip that I make. So it's kind of a two-part dinner and um, it's fabulous. Um, I'll tell you what I'm doing. Um, I'm getting ready to finish cutting up this onion. I'm going to saute it in my iron skillet in olive oil with um, some celery. But the meat we're using in our meatloaf is ground chuck, one pound, and a pound of lamb. Now, you can keep it all beef if you want, um, but I'm telling you, there's some flavor in the lamb that just is wonderful. You can also three-part it if you want and add a little bit of pork. Um, that has great flavor also, um, but tonight we're just doing the lamb and the and the beef, and it's going to be fabulous. So I've already diced up two celery stalks, and I'm finishing up my onion, which just a minute ago I cut into an onion, and it was bad, and it looked great on the outside, so that doesn't happen very often. Um, so I've got my iron skillet right here, and it's got some olive oil in it. And so we're just gonna dice up an onion. And you want it, I don't want big, big chunks. I kinda want them small. Now, a lot of people um, that don't care for onion, um, if you, it, onion has great flavor. So a lot of people think, I don't really like onions, so I don't put onion in it. Onion adds a lot of flavor, and if you dice it small enough and you saute it long enough, it turns into sweet flavor and adds something great to your dishes. So I encourage you to try it, even though you don't necessarily think you like onion. Um, onion is, I love onion. So we're gonna saute it. And really, half an onion. And these are two actually small stalks of celery, so that's why I did two. If you have really, really big ones, you can do, um, you can do one, it's fine. So we're gonna saute both of those together until they're softened and nice and sweet. Um, a little bit of olive oil, I probably have close to a tablespoon, salt, that's just gonna bring out the moisture in both of those and be delicious. And a little bit of pepper, okay? Um, let's forget to grab that. Stir that up, that's gonna cook for probably 10, 10 minutes or so. Um, okay, so to this, we are adding, actually let's cut this up first. We're gonna add thyme parsley, and chives. Now with thyme, you have to take the leaves off because you don't want these um, sticks in here. And to do that, if you grab one, I'll show you a trick, just like this, hold it at the tip, and if you just pull, they all just come off. So we'll do another one. And you see how they are, let me show you. Let me get a bigger one. Time is one of those things. You just have to be patient. 
but it's delicious, delicious and adds great flavor. You see how they're kind of going up? Well, we're pulling against, well, that one broke off, just like that, and all the leaves come off. So, it's not hard, but it just takes some time. Get it, time. Oh, goodness. Well, I've poured myself a glass of wine, and I have, it's election day, and so I imagine that we will be in front of the TV later, but we're still house hunting and that's a bit stressful. So came home, we poured a glass of wine and we turned on some music and we're just kind of chilling while we cook and it's therapy. So cheers to Tuesday, cheers to election day in our country. Mm, I'm drinking Klein Pinot Noir from Sonoma County tonight. We had it open actually from last night, so it's a wonderful fruity dry Pinot. Okay, so that we don't need a whole lot of time. I know it's taking a while. We're going to cut that up. A um, couple tablespoons. I'm going to do a little bit more of that. Chives. Cut this up. So there are no, besides salt and pepper, there isn't any dry herbs in this meatloaf. Okay? It is... Um, fresh. They're all fresh. Again, a little bit, mm, two tablespoons, I guess. And parsley. I had some left over, so these, this was in my refrigerator. Um, the key to this, we're gonna add some milk and egg, and the key to this meatloaf that makes it stay moist, everybody's favorite word, um, is the panko breadcrumbs. Now, typically, I would just pour the breadcrumbs in here, and you can certainly do that, but if you wanna go a little bit extra step, and put them in a food processor and grind them up to almost like a powder flour feel. It does something to the meatloaf. And so that's what we're gonna do. The other key, um, I know that sounds really weird, but um, that with the milk um, is gonna make this very moist. Um, we are gonna make the most amazing garlic, I call it garlic gravy. It's a garlic sauce that you pour over the meatloaf. Um, so this meatloaf is not your mama's meatloaf. It does not, you don't put ketchup on it. And so if you're thinking I'm crazy and you don't think that you're gonna like it, I dare you to try it. It's delicious. So these are sauteing beautifully. And I've got my parsley cut up, chopped up I should say. Again, about two tablespoons. So chives, thyme, parsley, um, salt, kosher salt, I'm using kosher salt, pepper, and three eggs. Now, I grew up eating meatloaf, and my mom made it all the time. I learned very young to make it, and we used saltines um, as our binder. Um, saltines, um, I think I've even used Ritz crackers. Um, and so that is also very good. But then out came Japanese breadcrumbs. And so 
ever since I learned about Japanese breadcrumbs and started to use them, um, I use them for lots of things. Okay, and whole milk. Not slim, not almonds, whole milk. And this meatloaf. So I buy the little one because we don't drink milk anymore and now that my kids are gone. And so, mm, quarter cup, something like that. All right, so in go the egg and the milk mixture. Throw your sleeves up, your hands, are your best kitchen tool, period. Those are gonna continue to cook. I'm gonna get the breadcrumbs out. I'm gonna put them in the food processor. Um, that's kind of a production and it's loud, so I'm not gonna video that. Um, and then we'll add it to this mixture. So right now, this is going to seem um, very wet, but that's okay because once we add those, and you don't want to over mix it, I don't want to make the meat, I don't want to make the meat too tough, okay? So it's been sitting out for probably 20, 30 minutes. I'm gonna wash my hands and do the um, breadcrumbs. That's gonna continue to cook. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you how I put it on. I've got a baking sheet that I have lined with aluminum foil, um, sprayed with Pam, and we're gonna make a loaf out of it, and then we're gonna bake it. So I'll show you how it all comes together. I promise it's not your mama's meatloaf, but it's worth the try, and I hope you make it. <laughs> 